It was a dawning and bright but heated day here in Los Angeles. This was full of cattle and movement from the marshal, sheriff, and the cowboys who would do their daily stop here in Sacramento. People around the Americas and beyond would come to this place to find the famous golden without the knowledge of the infamous people that would look for the death worthy yellow colored stones. The East born aristocracy will never reach to know that in the God forsaken hemisphere of this land will be valuable as well than in the original establishments that found upon discovery. Darn hell you boy! Start looking around for they go biting folk. Help me turn the saloon, will ya? Come on. The saloon tender was calling me while I was watching the expedition cuts, ringing my eardrums with his loud speech in the process. Coming, coming. I was already finishing. I replied with disdain and picked up my apron and press and folded my sleeves to the height of my elbows. I got into the saloon table and I started my job washing the big cups for all the people that dare to come to this fighting ground. Being a rehash saloon with entertainment. Saloon entertainment. <laughs> Much better would be a fighting ring with booze on the side. This saloon was really known for the kind of man that we welcome. I remember seeing revolutionaries being undercover as police, fanatics of the higher place, guns for hire. Soldiers that would do war for a dime, Buddha-centric witches and madmen. Oh, the diversity can be felt in this place, but something was for sure. The saloon had a special stench of dry blood and death waiting at every corner. It was sickening to me to work in this place knowing that the odor was not just the house-made rum that we made. A dollar makes it worth it and one more day and it will be over. I repeated myself this thing constantly, but somehow I uh, still work in this place even having $45 in my pocket, ready to go to Canada for a more wholesome experience. I don't know if it was a good pay that the work gave me as a tender, or my morbid curiosity made me go hungry to see what the underworld could offer me to see next, but I still was static to see what could happen to one of the forever clowns of here. Hoping to see there was something so shocking, so grueling that made me say, Mr. Halcon, you're right. I don't want to work here. I'll leave forever. Still, having two years working in this poor taste establishment and I haven't seen something that could knock my socks off since that evening that I almost met death in the eyes when I roll in a death defying abyss, roll back and survive. My life hasn't been the same since that moment. It wasn't a moment that I couldn't wish, even decided to the point of adrenaline rushing in my knees to run away and escape, and mature 20 years earlier as I was supposed to. It was like I turned off, numb of all emotions, already knowing that there would be nothing beyond the limit of living. I could say that I was already living with death, a damn man walking practically with its fate seal. While I was thinking, someone would always come at the same time to interrupt my routine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, partner. Well, time don't see you, partner. Wait, you're always here, you damn rascal. Pete the all fraudulent was in my field of vision, starting already my feisty day in the saloon. He would peel my skin off every time that he would boast about his new winning bet using all the cheating tactics that he could improvise, all while trying not to be caught in the act. Like once when he paid a rather small price for his hubris and being someone that he claimed in being the champion with the best luck in the world. Still having paid for it, he still made whatever miserable thing would do next. It was sickening to know someone that was not God honest with something that was not meant to be broken. The random of the possibility of winning with luck. Pete, stop posting like a fly over here. Leave unless you pay a drink. You know the rules here, man. I was visibly annoyed, trying to show him my discomfort at his presence. Hey, don't be aggressive. We cool. Here, I'll pay you too with my earnings from the last bet I got.
It's from that Dumbo right away there. You see him? The worst person with the tail of his eyes. Who was the victim of his latest scam? The victim was the thug that Mr. Hulk Kong contracted as his watcher for the saloon. I haven't talked to him, but certainly I could see that he was someone not to be fooled with. With the crooked, devilish TV poles and the scar that almost took his right eye, I got irritated knowing that maybe Pete could involve in something that I was not a part of. I won't take nothing from you, not from weasels like you. That's not what I learned wrong is to say the fact. He did the usual gasp of surprise that he would do every time we pass this. I know what he will say. Man, this isn't stolen money because the dog is the one that takes with force of possession while me. He would still spit all the saliva that he would do about the honesty that he guaranteed to his clients about playing safe with giving an investment to a lot game. Because it was something that fate wanted him to be as part of the one that reclaimed something that was deserving of him. He dared to compare it as the honest job that you would get at being a skin man, a hunter, a musician, heck, even a layman. Can you believe the audacity of this guy? It was further explaining more about how he won this bet with the guard with a trick that he made putting a dollar on a bottle of tequila and made him do a challenge where he could yank the bill out of the bottle without tumbling it. Of course, this is not impossible, but he only knew of the trick because he invented it. This consisted of just punching the table while yanking the bill at the same time, and he would have his money that way. Hmm. Whenever I protested this missing sense of earnesty, he will always reply that this is fair in order to save his family. Yes, his family will want him and him. Making the game all in all unjust to someone that thinks into knowing that they somehow with their delusion can win the scam. Really, is nobody that awake to not notice that something could be weird with the things he does? Hmm, well I don't mind this problem if it's not with me then I don't mess with y'all. Pete was still spitting to me, so I decided to accept his money by manipulate him to make him drink his booze while giving me nothing. I don't care much of his fake charity, already knowing what problem I could enter by just talking to him. Someone opened the door with subtlety. The sound was inaudible with all the cacophony of the crackles and gargles of all the people that were drinking and playing in the sodding hours of dawn until the sun being in the middle of the same sky, scorching the plants and all the people with its heat. I was looking around for the person who opened the door. I thought I watched his silhouette clearly in the door, but he just slipped away from my vision. I was looking for a minute, even ignoring Pete that for that time. I had a pick interest in that person. After that, I decided to leave him be and just move on with my routine. I asked and I got delivered with a bolted jump with my knee when I saw that man that I was clearly looking for. Clearly this man was not someone that was a commoner in the saloon. He had an outfit of a bounty hunter. A big black scratch leather coat, a black watch Levi's the name with a belt that had a skull bucket with two shell books that run through the front of his waist to his buttocks. Flat black hat that hid partially his silky black hair. The most interesting feature that I saw from him was his circular sunglasses and a bandana that was covering his face. And of course, his two hand cannons that I only saw some weird design made into it. He was a big old build. Yeah, I could see that he wasn't from here. Everybody wished to look his this intimidating, but also be deceitful in not attracting attention. Run with a punch of tobacco. The man muffled his request. I nodded and I started doing the mix with the recently was jug. Here you go. Enjoy it, sir. The man raised the jug to me and glug it in two chugs, still with his bandana in place. It was amazing that he could do that. Now I had the curiosity to see why would he be hiding something in his mouth. 
Normally, Mr. Hulk Kong would tell his client to take off his mask, but for me, it is something that bothers me in the sense that I cannot stand to see people trying to hide a lot of misery only his mouth. It's not like something could be revealing an intimate of a smile. The man kept asking for the same drink two times and she chugged now with more calmness and taking more time to end his jug. Probably the man was on a long journey so I decided to not give a conversation with him to see if he needed more help. He could tell me himself what he needed. I could read his personality by the way they engaged with their entrance to the saloon. Some can be quiet like him, some could be high rolling like Pete. So there was not much to see from the spectrum of behavior. Still, P was going chattering to me about all the things had that I had been doing the new game that he invented. He made a new game where he would ban a cigarette end to end and be unscathed in the process. All he took was the same dollar bill to make a trick. He would roll it in inside the bill and bend it. Ta-da! What this moment to press my ingenuity? He was open in his arms, pointed to the cigarette with his two palms. I sarcastically clapped with it. Sincerely, he was really intelligent and smart to make things that seem physically impossible. Cigarettes were really wobbly and they would crumble with just putting it in a pocket. I wish that he could use this wit and better things to do so. It somehow knew that I was looking for that mysterious man sitting in the side of the corner. Something was getting ignited in the mind of the infamous guy. Hey, check this out! I'll do the same thing to him! I want him easy! I was checking my hand, trying to make him reject to this instinct that he had for this game. Just leave him alone, can you give it a break to this for one second? Please, for the spell of your misery, just not him. This smells like problem. I don't know this other man, but I prefer not to be hanging around to see it. I said, my friend, the silent ones are the easiest suckers. You'll see. Pete was sliding in like a clever. All for the people sitting for their drink, he would be greeting them without much of a reply from their pop. He sits down beside this man and he shakes his hand in a burlesque way. I couldn't appreciate what they were talking about. Somehow he convinced this man to play the game that he showed me a while ago. I was suspecting the reaction of what would happen after failing his three attempts in completing the challenge and see that Pete will inevitably win and without bout. And it's he clapping? The man is clapping at the slime man and somehow he wanted to see more. Apparently the man was getting amused with the wit of his games. He still lost either way. But he was more curious upon losing almost $5 while seeing all the games that Pete had in his sleeve.